In Jesus' name we pray. This is a house of purity. And you are going to tell the Lord, the Bible tells us in Micah chapter 3, Malachi chapter 3, verse 3, it tells us what God is going to do in Malachi chapter 3, verse 3. And he shall see as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and put them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord and offering in righteousness. You are going to pray that this very place you have come, God will purify you. That you are offering unto God the offering of prayer, the offering of praise with the acceptable of the Lord. Open your mouth and talk with the Lord. The Lord. He has promised to purify, to refine. To purge us, make us pure, make us holy, make us after his image. So that our services, our offering, the things we offer unto God, our services unto him be acceptable unto God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For us to get the best from the Lord, we need to prepare our hearts. In Ezra chapter 7, because God, this is a house of promise. God has promised to do great things for every one of us. In our individual lives, in the ministry, in Ezra chapter 7, the stand. For Ezra have prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgment. They are going to tell the law as you are here, they are not just going to be here as a spectator. That God should prepare your heart that the things we hear, God will help you obey and to do according to his will so that the desire blessings of God may come upon your life. Let us pray. Prepare your heart to 
the receive of the Lord. Prepare your heart. remain standing as we sing from our hymn book gospel hymns and song in 11 holy 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 lord god almighty early in the morning a song shall rise to thee holy 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 merciful and mighty in three persons trinity holy 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 all the saints adore thee casting down the golden crown around the glassy sea cherubim and seraphim Falling down before thee, who are and are and evermore shall be, holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eyes of sinful men thy glory may not see, only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power. In law and purity, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea, holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity.
Praise the Lord. It's time for search the scripture. Let's close our eyes as we pray together. Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're very grateful for this occasion. This is a momentous event in the history of your church. We come to your presence to hear your word in this search, the scripture, and we pray that your spirit will speak to us. We pray that the lessons, Lord, we enter into our hearts and produce the fruit of transformation in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for taking charge of the proceedings of everything. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We come to the Sunday scripture today with the title, The Building and Dedication of God's Temple. The Building and Dedication of God's Temple. A memory verse is taken from Agai chapter 2 verse 9. Agai chapter 2. We read from verse 9. Verse 9 says, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, said the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. Shall we say amen? Let's read it together. Agai chapter 2 verse 9. One, two, go. The glory of these houses shall be greater than of the four seven hosts. And in this place will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. Our text is taken from two passages of scripture. Number one, Haggai chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 23. We're going to read verse 1 to 9 to save time. And Second Chronicles chapter 5. Verse 1 to 14. We're going to read verse 11 to verse 14 also to save the time. As we go along in the teaching, we'll look at all the other references. A guy, chapter 2, verse 1 to 9, Pastor Dudu will read for us. A guy, chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 9, Pastor Dudu, please. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Jezedek, the high priest, and be strong, O ye people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you, when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remained among you, fear ye not. For that says the Lord of hosts, yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 11 to verse 14. Pastor Shegum Babatokwe will read for us. Babatokwe, please. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, all the priests that were present were sanctified, and did not then wait by cause. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them, of Asaph, of Eman, of Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them an hundred and twenty priests, sounding with trumpets. It came even to pass, 
of the trumpeters and singers was one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lined up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house will fill with the cloud in the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. That experience will be repeated here today in Jesus' name. Say it louder, amen. amen. The building and dedication of God's temple, building a place of worship that befits the majestic beauty, splendor of excellence, and resplendent glory of God is the Lord's delight. Although the heavens can't contain the Almighty God, yet God Almighty Himself desires to fellowship with His people in a temple, a dilapidated, decrepit, and unkempt place of worship is not the Lord's delight. That's why the Lord God Almighty had to call the people of Israel to rise up and build his temple. The temple was built by Solomon, but then because Israel went into sin and refused to repent, they were sent into captivity in the lands of the Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar came, burned down the temple, plundered it, and brutally left it devastated and desolated. But eventually when they came back after 70 years in captivity, they were busy padding and plastering their own welfare. They were not bothered about rebuilding the temple that was broken down and burnt down. And God had to send his prophet Agai to call them to order and to wake them up to do what should be done. This is not the first time God will ask a tabernacle or a temple to be built in his name. Even in the wilderness, God desired to have a tabernacle built for him so that he could dwell in the midst of the people and have fellowship with them. As we see in Exodus chapter 25, verse 1. And verse 8, David had this understanding. That's why he embarked on the project. But he was not allowed to do it, so he passed the baton to his son who completed it. And the same temple that was built by Solomon was very, very imposing and had not such a temple, no such building, no such structure. In their own time, in fact, the first Kings chapter 20, chapter 10, verse 20 says, there was none like it when it was referring to one of the interior decorations in the temple. In their own days, by the grace of God, our eyes are seeing something marvelous today. All over the world, this temple has been talked about, the place of worship of the Almighty God. God gave his guided shepherd the vision. Thirteen years ago, he embarked upon it, and with tenacity of faith, with the strength of character, with anchor of hope and with fervency of prayer, we are here today. I say we are here today. Give God the praise. Praise the Lord. And so, brothers and sisters, God wants us to build for Him a place of worship that befits His glory, that befits His royalty, that befits His almighty personality. That is why we are here today. And wherever we are, Deep Alive Bible Church, all over the world, what we see happening in Jerusalem should be replicated in Judea, in Samaria, and all the uttermost part of the world. If it works here, it will work everywhere in Jesus' name. And we are not just building temples, we are building people as well. This just began 45 years ago with building people, and it's still doing it. And now it's time for us to match that with building befitting place of worship that the speed of the gospel preaching might be accelerated and the rate at which souls are discipled and matured in the faith might be enhanced in the name of Jesus Christ. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 9, the Lord God tests, first by his prophet, chapter 4, verse 9, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house, his hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Whatever project, divine project we are embarking upon, 
Let's believe in the Lord as your hands have laid the foundation. We have seen it happening here. Your hands will also finish it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever project, divine project, you want to reach out to people, you want to build people's lives, you want to have programs of soul winning, of discipleship, of maturation, of discipleship, and all, whatever programs that will take people, make them ready for heaven, believe in the Lord, take hold on faith, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, and the fervency of prayer, the courage of conviction. Go ahead, go for broke. God will give you the success in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Louder, amen. As we look at this, such a scripture, we have three points coming on from the passages. Number one, proclamation and provision to build God's temple. We see that in Agai chapter 1, verse 8. God made that proclamation. Agai chapter 1, verse 8. And then we we'll see it also in chapter 2, verse 8. In chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, said the Lord. And then the Lord God said in chapter 2, verse 8, through his prophet, The silver is mine, that's the provision, and the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. If God makes a demand, he provides the resource. Say amen. Say amen. amen. God's provision goes with God's proclamation. And God's proclamation goes with God's provision. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 9. Chapter 4 verse 9 says, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. That's assurance of faith. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. In Exodus chapter 35, verse 4 to 5, there we see the Lord God Almighty asking the people to bring to him offerings of different kinds and different forms to erect a tabernacle for him in the wilderness. Think about that. That's the wilderness. There was no commercial activities at all in the wilderness. Israel was a peculiar nation. Israel was set apart from all other nations of the world. And yet God said, I want a tabernacle built for me. And it was done. People brought out the things needed. And those things were put together. And the tabernacle was erected. Don't look at the weather. Don't check the economies. Don't look at the intricacies of the domestic and global and national economies of people. Go ahead with prayers and faith in the Lord. Provision will come your way. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If it's the project of the Lord. If it has a warrant of the scripture. It will be done in the name of Jesus Christ. The temple of Solomon was finished, was built because it was provided for. David made sure everything was ready and everything was ready. If you look at this proclamation and provision, we see number one, three assurances there. The first assurance is assurance of his presence. A guy, chapter 2, verse 6, when God makes proclamation, and when God gives you the provision, that's assurance of his presence. You are not alone. You're not alone in ministry, wherever you are. You're not alone in preaching the gospel, teaching the people. Go ahead and get the job done on the strength of the Holy Spirit. Number two, we we'll see the assurance of his power. In Agai chapter 2 verse 6, that's what we can depend on. Agai chapter 2 verse 6, number 3, we we'll see assurance of his provision. Agai chapter 2 verse 8 and Exodus chapter 36 verse 5. I pause here to ask some questions. Number one, what gives the people of God the assurance to go all out to execute kingdom projects? Maybe building, maybe soul winning, maybe church planting. What will give you the assurance that the Lord God is with you to go all out, set sail and put to sea? Yes, our, let's have one of our pastors, group coordinators from Lagos this side. If there's nobody there, quickly, Pastor Amani. Pastor Amani. Well, once his word says it, and he commands us, he will make available all necessary provision to accomplish it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have assurance of his presence. 
We have the assurance of his power. We have the assurance of his provision. Point number two. Point number two, the penalty. The penalty for pollution and uncleanness in God's temple. The penalty for pollution and uncleanness in God's temple. As the people were called upon to rise up and build the temple of the Lord, they were also warned to watch out for holiness and righteousness and watch against transgressions, iniquities, and uncleanness of various forms, various shapes, various levels, and various degrees. That was their undoing in the past. They fell into sin and they went into captivity. And what the Lord God hated years ago hundred years ago he still hates today and he will continue to hate because he says i'm the lord i change not i don't change my personality i don't change my principles i don't change even my program i am the lord i change not and because they didn't listen that time they suffered for it they went into captivity i pray we will not suffer before we change in jesus name as we worship the lord in this great edifice as we come to his presence this is not the place for us to behave sinfully, to behave with, our, with the mindset of deviation. You want to be different. This is not a place to want to transact business. You want to turn it to a commercial center. This is not the place for us to manifest attitudinal displays that negate, that negate the purpose of worship. This is not the place, by the grace of God, to do dating game. Men and women and making meetings. We are here to worship the Lord. We are here to receive his touch and receive his training. We are here to be molded and transformed and be blessed and be made ready for eternity. God will do it for us in Jesus' name. But as we come together, let's remember there's punishment for rebellion. There's penalty for pollution and uncleanness in God's temple. God's temple physically God's temple spiritually. We are God's temple. Amen. We are the building of God. Amen. We are God's husbandry. Amen. And if we defile the temple of the Lord, the same punishment as though we defile the temple, the physical temple of the Lord, we must watch out in those two areas. Number one, there will be elimination of prosperity. We'll be suffering in the midst of plenty. That's the guy, chapter 2, verse 16. Number two, there will be experiences of pestilence. There will be sickness and diseases. God, oh God will permit anything to happen to us because we are not for him and we are rebellious. Number three, there will be eviction from his presence. The Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated that in Matthew chapter 21, verse 4, 12 to 14, when he went into the temple and had to cast out and overturn the tables of money changers and all those who are selling doves, those who have turned the house of the Lord to a commercial center. They were all evicted from the presence of the Lord. Now here, and in all deeper life Bible churches all over the world, the pastor may not send you out of the church. The ushers have no permission to even do that from the general superintendent. But the point is this, God himself may screen you out. He will just screen you out of his blessings and screen you out of his touch and screens you out of all the good things that he wants, he wants to do for the people. The rain of God falling in the temple, you will come under a kind of umbrella that will prevent you from getting soaked. That's how to be cast out by the Lord. But we have better hope for all of us. Even though we don't speak, we believe that we will come to the presence of the Lord mindful of purity, mindful of holiness, and today is the first day that we are entering by the grace of God into the realm of greater glory. Greater glory for me, greater glory for all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Say it louder, amen. amen. And look at the penalty quickly now before our time runs out. Elimination of prosperity, experiences of pestilence, eviction from the presence of the Lord, exclusion from paradise. Think about that. Somebody who continues to rebel against the Lord, very, very stubborn, will not take correction, will not take discipline. That person risks being excluded from paradise. First Corinthians chapter 3, let's read from there verse 16 and verse 17. First Corinthians chapter 3, let's read from verse 16 and then verse 17. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? 
If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? We pray we will not defy the temple of the Lord. How do you defy the temple of the Lord? You can defy the temple of the Lord, which you are by unforgiving spirit, by unconditional, unlimited stubbornness. You can defy the temple of the Lord God, whom you are by grieving the Holy Spirit. I pray by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will not defy the temple of the Lord in Jesus' name. Those who are listening would say a louder amen. Now, by the grace of God, we want to round off with point number three. But before then, I have just this one question. Why was the Lord not happy with the people for neglecting to build his temple? Why was he not happy with them? Why was he not happy with them? One of our brothers, one of our members of the choir, please, quickly, please, our time slipped away. Yes, that brother there. Why was he not happy? The Lord was not happy with them because it's like despising his glory, it's like despising his name, and not giving him his due honor to him. Thank you very much. The promise and praise at the dedication of God's temple. The promise and praise at the dedication of God's temple. God Almighty has promised us that when we come together to fellowship with him in his temple, he will bless us. Say amen. He will transform us. Say amen. He will take away all our yokes and all our burdens. And he will set us free to walk in beauty of holiness all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Let's look at the word of God here in Agai chapter 2. Look at verse 18. Now time has slipped away. Agai chapter 2 verse 18 down to verse 23. The Lord God Almighty tests the people here in this passage the things they will get when they come to worship him at the dedication of his temple. Not only that, in chapter 2 verse 7 to verse 8 he also promised them the same thing. Ezekiel 26 verse 16. The Lord God told them, give them another assurance of his blessing. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 15 to verse 17. Solomon's temple was dedicated and God gave them assurance of continuous answers to their prayers. Let me just summarize. Number one, the blessings, disarming and destruction of the foe. All the foes of the Lord will be disarmed in Jesus' name. The disarmament takes off this morning. Whatever comes together here with you, whatever enemy has been on your heels, and yet you run into this place, this is a place of refuge. Those enemies will be disarmed, and those demons will be destroyed in Jesus' name. Number two, there will be decoration and defense of the faithful. Decoration and defense of the faithful. Agai chapter 2 verse 23, God will defend you in the day and at night. He will also decorate you with his power. Wherever you go, you carry the anointing of the Lord. You carry the presence of the Lord. You carry the power of the Lord. Number three, dealing and dwelling with us in fellowship. God will deal with us and God will dwell with us in fellowship. Not only for one day, but the rest days of our lives and even in eternity. Dealing and dwelling with us in fellowship. Number four, it's the delivery of all our demands in full. Delivery of all our demands in full. And as we praise the Lord today, the celebration of his presence and power will begin in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord God says, any prayer we offer to him in this holy place, like in the days of Solomon, he has promised to answer, and I can guarantee you on the basis of the scripture, as our Father and the Lord comes in to teach us and to lead us further up the road of righteousness and holiness, and he pronounces the blessings of the Lord upon us, short prayers, mighty, 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 mighty miracles in Jesus' name. The house of the Lord is open to worship. The house of the Lord is open to wonders. The house of the Lord is open to walking in righteousness and holiness. I will be a partaker. I am a partaker already. 
Rise upon your feet and pray unto the Lord that the blessings of today in the name of Jesus Christ will be yours in Jesus' name. That the blessings of today, the transformations of today, you will, you will, not, you will not miss it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As the worship service starts today, God Almighty, by the Holy Ghost, will make you a partaker a continuous partaker, a perpetual partaker of all his blessings and of all his glory and of all his transformation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And you will never do anything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to desecrate the temple of the Lord, to defile the temple of the Lord, whether the physical temple or the spiritual temple that you are. Pray. And if you have done anything wrong, this is a time for you to confess to the Lord and say, I've defiled your temple, physical, spiritual, and I'm sorry about it, and I'm repenting today. Forgive me. Bring everything to God's altar. Submit yourself to his surgeries. This is God's workshop. And as you do this, God Almighty, we have mercy on you. Pray the prayer and the Lord will answer. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We are grateful unto you, Heavenly Father, for what you have shared with us. We pray, O oh God of heaven, that what you have consecrated unto yourself will not be defiled by any of us in Jesus' name. We shall keep you perpetually in this place of worship. And your name will be exalted. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Please let's sit down. We give glory and honor to the name of the Lord for what he has done. And great is the Lord. And it's greatly to be praised. What the Lord has done here is wonderful. And we give glory and honor to his name. May he be exalted forever in Jesus' name. In case you have any question on what we have listened to, the building and the dedication of God's temple, because this is a great thing. This is a wonderful thing. It is marvelous in our eyes. But in case you have any question, please raise up your hand wherever you are. I can see a brother in the front here. I don't know where the young ones are. Let's listen to our brother here. Praise the Lord. So there is uh, a quotation that uh, was written in one of our group of districts. It says that vision without execution is like hallucination. I, in the course of our learning this morning, uh, the ministers of God says that for the past 30 to 35 years ago, this church had a vision to put this wonderful, beautiful edifice in place. And to the glory of God Almighty, it came to pass. And I'm very happy and I congratulate our Father in the Lord. So I want to bring it to the spiritual angles. In a situation whereby someone had uh, a dream of a uh, vision of rapture, and along the line, at the end of the day, that person did not make it to heaven. And uh, can we say that that person just had an hallucination? He did not have a real vision coming from God about making it to heaven. Because in that dream, 
he had the vision that he made it to heaven and eventually he did not make it so i want to know sir, whether that person vision is not real that's just what i want to ask. Uh, i want us to look at it this way what you have said is not related exactly to what we are looking at this day Are you with me? Sir. But all the same, no matter what, if the Lord has shown you that you are making it to heaven, you don't relax. You must continue. Because he that endures to the end, what will happen? The same shall be saved. So that you have had a vision some years ago that you have an understanding that you are making it to heaven you must not stop there we saw clearly in our passage that we read today in, first, uh, in one of the passages in 1st Chronicles chapter 28 God promised Solomon that he was going to dwell perpetually in the temple of the Lord God assured him because he promised God and he told God that he was going to follow the Lord. God appeared to him in 1st King chapter 3. God appeared to him again in 1st King chapter 8. And eventually, he did not follow the Lord. And because he did not follow the Lord, the promise that God gave before could not stand. In the same way, if there is any of us here who feels I have made it already and he's not careful about his life. He will not be able to make it by and by. Let me quickly read to you uh, this passage because in First King in First Chronicles chapter 28. First Chronicles chapter 28. First Chronicles chapter 28. Let me read there in verse 9. And thou Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thought. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will forsake thee for how long? Forever. That is eternal damnation. Therefore, he said in verse 10, Take it now. For the Lord has chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary of the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Uh, time will fail me to look at how he eventually built it. And when he built it, God also commended it. And God promised that he was going to dwell there forever. But by and by, let me look at 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11. I'm reading there from verse 1. Remember God had promised him that he was going to be there. Then look at 1 Kings chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. For King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Ethites, of the nations concerning which the Lord has said, the, the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their, after, after their gods. Solomon cleave unto this in law, contrary to the will of God. And he made seven, and, uh, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, 
and his wives turn away his heart. Even though, remember, God had promised Solomon that he would be with him. And God had promised David that generations after him, he will continue to give them a perpetual kingship. But because they went against the will of God, they didn't continue in the will of the Lord. God left them. God didn't continue with them. Verse 4, for it came to pass. When it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wife turned away his heart after their gods, and the heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. For Solomon went... Uh, uh, let, let me just read in verse, uh, verse, verse 6. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Verse 8. And likewise did he for all his... He, he built houses for all his strange wives, and he burned incense. And verse 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. The Lord will not be angry with you. That's why the promise, that's why all that was done, the Lord was angry with Solomon. Because his heart was torn from the Lord, God of Israel, which had appeared unto him how many times? Not only just hearing or dreaming, God appeared to him twice. And because he did not continue, God, as a result of that, was angry with him. And I just pray that God will help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. And, and, I, commanded, and I commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. If we don't keep what the Lord has commanded, if we are not standing on the word of God, if we are not obeying the word of God, if we are not going with clean hands and pure heart on a daily basis, the Lord cannot continue with us. The Lord could not continue with him. But it is my sincere prayer that the Almighty God, he will continue with us in Jesus' name. Therefore, dearly beloved brother, that a person has dreamed that a person has seen something, that a person has had something, it is in your continuity. It is in your maintaining the presence of God in your life. That is how eventually you will make it to the end. And so the house, thank you, so the house we are built for the glory of the name of the Lord, we thank God for what the Lord has done in this place. We thank God for what the Lord has given unto us in this place. God is good to us and we bless his holy name. But we should reflect on the past. What was this church doing in the old Bagada that kept testimonies to be coming day in, day out? We should not forget, reflect back, look back on what the Lord has done for us before. The children of Israel, in 1 Samuel chapter 7, in verse 2, they look back and they said, here we are. This is our Ebenezer. We have how far the Lord has helped us. Without any doubt, the Lord has helped this church. Without any doubt, the Lord has helped you. Because you were part and parcel of the progress that we are seeing today and of what the Lord is doing today. Why? Because we were, we worked together with the man of God who had a vision. So we had one motive, we had one mission, we had one motivation. We had one manner of life. We had one mind. And we had one master. We had only one mentor. And we are looking forward unto only one mansion. Not two. All of us were together with one mind, with one purpose. And by the grace of God, the Lord will be with us. But we should understand that if we look back to what the Lord has done, we should not relax on that. We should look at the, the past. We should not only look at the past. We should also realize the present. The past. Look at it. The present. Where are we? 
we should understand that if there are no measure, if there are no assessment, if there are no examination, if there are no tests, you will not be able to know whether you are where you are supposed to be and you are not, or you are not what you are not supposed to be. Temptation came to Solomon in his life and you can see how he failed woefully. But God helping us, we shall not fail. The Lord is telling us we should move forward. We should not remain where we have been before. Yes, we have started this journey. And the Lord has helped us so far. But the Lord is saying, in the book of Exodus, in chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14, I want to read here in verse 15. This is an admonition to the church of God. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto, unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Dearly beloved, from this point, what should we do? What should we do? Every one of us, we should move forward. We should not remain where we have been. We should not only look at the grandeur, the beauty of our church and remain there. Let's move forward. Greater days are coming. Mightier days are coming. Look at what the Lord told us in our memory verse today. He said the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. The former was referring to the, the building of Solomon. It was great. Everybody, in fact, it was one of the wonders of the world. And all the same, God said the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. By the grace of God, what we have seen today, greater things are coming ahead. Yeah. It is the beginning of great things. And I want to tell you today, as the Lord is building this physical house for the church and has built it and has commissioned it, so also God will be your life. Yeah. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit where God wants to dwell. And I need to tell you that God is here because you are here. If you are not here, God will not be here. If we are not righteous in the church of the living God, God will depart. God departed from the temple of Solomon and they were carrying all the gold and silver and all the beautiful things that were there. They were carried away because the people were not right. They went astray. They did not follow the mind of God. As a result of God, God forsook them. God will not forsake us. We are the people that will keep this church alive. We are the people that will keep the presence of the Lord here. With our hands, with our life, with our conduct, with the way we take the word of God. You are not selective about the word of God. You are obeying the totality of the word of God. And you will make up your mind. Oh God, I am coming to the new Bagada. And my life also will be new. And my aspiration and my motive and my goal will be new. I am going higher. The church is going higher. I am contributing to the growth and the development of this church. And by the grace of God, I will not defy the church. Let's rise up on our feet and pray to God. Just commit yourself unto God. It's a time to talk to God. Whatever we are seeing today, greater things the Lord will do. Greater things the Lord wants to do. But you are the people. We are the people. Each of us must contribute. Each of us must play our own role. I will not defile this church. By the work I do, by the language of my mouth, by whatever is happening in my family, I will not defile this church. By the standard of life I live, I will not defile this church. And when I come into the church, I will contribute to the spiritual growth and development of our church. The Lord will help us. The Lord will assist us. As we make up our mind to do the service of the Lord wholeheartedly, without looking back, without look, turning around, the Lord will help us. It's, we have been told that this house will be called the house of prayer. It's a time to open our mouth and pray 
oh God, I will contribute to make this place a place of prayer. I will contribute to make this place the house of God. The place where God will dwell. Where miracles will be happening. Where signs and wonders will be happening. Where the sinners will be coming and they will be finding salvation. Sinners will be finding salvation here. The believers will be getting sanctified here. The sanctified will be getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. There will be healing and deliverances here. There will be great miracles here day in, day out. Signs and wonders will be our experience in all our churches. It has started from our headquarter church. And it shall go on, on and on like that into all our churches. Then the beloved pray. We have an opportunity to pour out our hearts unto God and to make a covenant with the Lord. This is the first combined service in this new auditorium. In this great place that God has given to the church. You have contributed to it. Thank God that you follow the concept that the Lord gave to the man of God. Our father in the Lord. Thank God for the commencement. Thank God for the contributions that you made. Thank God for the commitment to see it to this level. Oh God, I have contributed to the physical house. Let the heaven contribute also to my spiritual house. My spiritual house. You have cooperated. With the man of God, heaven will cooperate with you. The construction was made. The Lord will chisel out everything that is not right in your life. And there will be a completion by the grace of God. And there will be a commissioning in your life also by the power of the Almighty. What the Lord has started, he will complete. What the Lord has started, he will commission it. And by the grace of God, we will enjoy heaven together. The mansions the Lord has gone to prepare for us, we shall be there. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will stand by you. We are here. Because the Lord is here. Let's not drive away the Lord. Let's not drive away his spirit. No, not at all. We are the one that will sanctify this place by our lives. By our conduct. And by whatever we are doing. The Lord is in his holy temple. God dwells in his holy temple. And he said, we are two or three are gathered together in my name. There I will be in the midst of them. The Lord is in our midst. The Lord will remain in our midst. Let's keep the Lord in, our, in, in the midst of the church of God. And he shall be well with us. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. We have prayed. Heavenly Father. We are grateful unto you. And we thank you very much. Because of what you have told us. What you have in stock for us. We want to pray. That. The grace of God will be sufficient for every one of us to do the right in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not look back. We will not allow whatever we have seen, whatever we have had, whatever we have achieved before to overcome us to the point that we will not be able to make further progress. Further progress will be our aspiration in Jesus' name. We will make progress. We will move from strength to strength. We will move from grace to grace. And all the expectations of our heart shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever comes in here, anytime we want to pray God that this place will be a place of refuge in Jesus' name. Those 
those who are bound by the devil, they will find deliverance here. And great, great blessings will be on our lives and we shall glorify you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, O God. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please, we will remain standing as we sing together from our gospel hymns and song in 62. Go labor on, spend, and be spent. The joy to do Father's will. It is the way the masters went. Should not the servant tread it still? Go labor on. It's not for naught. The, the earthly loss is heaven's gain. Men, he did. Here, I, I love thee, praise thee not. The master praises what are men. Men die in darkness at your side without a hope of cheer, of cheer the, the tomb. Take off the torch and with it wide. The torch that lies time, thickens gloom. Toil on, and in thy toil rejoice. For toil comes rest. For exile, for, uh, for exile come. Soon shall thou hear the bridegroom's voice. The midnight, the midnight peer. Behold, I call.
Kaki Chu. Heaven came down. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Who oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispel. With joy, I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Born of the Spirit, with the life from above, into God's family divine, justified fully through Calvary's law. Oh, what is standing me? Oh, what is standing is mine, and the transaction so quickly was made when is a sinner I came took off the offer of grace he did prefer save me oh praise is their name now I have a hope that we surely endure after the passing of time I have a future in heaven for sure. There is there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day. When at the cross, I believe, riches eternal and blessings supernal from his precious hand. I receive. Heavens came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross, the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heavens came down and glory filled my soul.
Brethren, this is a time for us to lift up our voices unto the Lord for his glory. Let us pray. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Worship the Lord for his presence. Worship the Lord for his power. Worship the Lord for his mercies. Worship the Lord for his goodness. Worship the Lord for saving your soul. 
Worship the Lord for his presence in this very place. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Let's glorify him. He is great. He is mighty. He is the almighty. He is the all sufficient. He is the El Shaddai. He is the great I am that I am. He is the mighty in power. He is the mighty in battle. He is the great God. Our redeemer. Our maker. Our mighty God. Our captain. Let's worship him. Let's glorify his holy name. His glory is in this very place. Worship him and bless his holy name. Worship him and bless his holy name. He's worthy to be praised. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. His mercy endured forever. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Lord, you are mighty. Lord, you are great. Lord, you are wonderful. Bless his name. Worship him. He desires our worship, our adoration. Let's glorify him, mighty in battle. The one who fulfills his promises. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Lift up your voices unto the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Bless his name for the Lord is great. Let his glory come down. Let his power come down. Let his glory come down upon every one of us this very day. In this service, his presence, his power, his glory. Let there be showers from heaven upon every soul in this very place. Let our voices thunder unto him. He is worthy to be praised. Glorify his name. Magnify his name. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible tells us in the book of Malachi, chapter 3. Bring ye all the tithes into the strong house, into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, therewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. This is the time for us to worship the Lord with our tithe and offering. And so whatever we have brought to worship the Lord with, our tithe and offering, we raise them up and then we are going to pray. And then I want to inform you that we have P.O.S outside this building in case there are people who want to pay their tithe and offering using the POS. Let's lift them up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you and glorify your holy name because of this very day. Father, with what you have blessed us with, we have brought our offerings, our tithe, before you this very day, Father, we pray that you will bless every giver in the name of Jesus. And that, Father, you will open the windows of heaven according to your promises and bless your people that there will not be room enough to contain your blessings upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you for having heard an answer. For in Jesus' name we pray. You keep your hands up. While the uh, brethren are passing the bags, you drop what the Lord, uh, what you are dropping for the Lord. We, are, we continue in our prayer. Prayer for the nation. The Bible tells us in the book of 
First Timothy chapter 2. In First Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 1. First Peter, Timothy chapter 2, from verse 1. I exalt therefore that first of all, supplications, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Let's lift up our government before the Lord. Let's pray for our leaders that God will grant them the grace to rule in the fear of God. Let us pray. Let's pray. All our leaders in this country, Nigeria, outside the country, wherever you are connected with us, you pray for your leaders that the Lord God Almighty will grant them the wisdom, the grace to rule the nations in the fear of God. And that the peace of God will reign in our nations. Pray that God will help our leaders not to make laws that we go against his will. Pray that righteousness will reign in our nations. Prayer for the church. We're going to thank the Lord for this church, Deeper Christian Life Ministry, Deeper Life Bible Church. We're going to tell the Lord at this very moment, we appreciate what he's doing. Lift up your hand and tell the Lord, we appreciate him. Tell the Lord, we appreciate you, what you are doing. And let's tell the Lord to do greater for this ministry. Let's pray for revival across the nations, all over the world. That that will be revival. The fire of God. That will be burning from this very center. From these headquarters. We cross across all nations. Let's pray for some believers. Who are being persecuted. For their stand in righteousness and for the Lord. Let's lift up our voices unto the Lord and pray that God will preserve them and help them to remain steadfast in the face of those persecutions and trials. Let's pray for those believers and others who have been displaced as a result of conflict in the world that God will comfort them, uphold them, and that their faith we not weaver. Let's pray for this church that God will use this ministry to reach out to more souls that there will be great manifestation of his power in reaching out to the unsaved. Let's pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray for our general superintendent, our father in the Lord. Let's thank God for him and let's pray that the almighty God who have used him to lead us, to guide us, to direct him, that the Lord will uphold him. That the Lord will grant him longer life. That the Lord, the Bible says, the end of the righteous is peace. That God will grant him peace in every area of his life in the name of Jesus. 
we are going to pray for unprecedented manifestation of God's power in his life. That God, who have used him to raise and to build this new Bagada, we give him unprecedented manifestation of his power that we surpass over uh, past this new Bagada administration. Let us pray. Lift up your voices unto the Lord for a general superintendent. The power of God, the anointing of the Lord to be upon him. God will renew his vision. Strengthen him. Renew his anointing. Greater anointing. Greater unction. Greater utterance. Greater exploit for the almighty God. He will renew his days. Strengthen him in the inner man and physically. He will run and will not be weary. Vision for the end time. He will give him the resources to carry out the visions he has given to him. The power and the strength to do what the Lord has called him to do. That God will keep him faithful to the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God in heaven, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we bless you. Father, we worship you. The great things you have done in our days is marvelous in our sight. Lord, for these great things we say, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we believe that this is the beginning of miracles. Beginning of breakthroughs. Beginning of deliverances. Beginning of greater manifestations. Lord, even in this very service of this very day, burdens will be lifted here in the name of Jesus. The kingdom of God will be populated. Souls will be delivered. Captives will be set free. All those who are in bondage will be loose in the name of Jesus. The problems people have brought into this very place. Oh God, you will bring solution to them in the name of Jesus. Your servant will minister in the fullness and in the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that no individual, inside or outside, those connected with us, we miss your blessing. And the thing you are communicating to him or her in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We pray you will bless us as we continue this worship service. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. The general superintendent of Deeper Christian Life Ministry Worldwide is delighted seated here physically is delighted to see and to welcome you those of you who are coming for the first time can you please stand up wherever you are those worshiping with us for the first time wherever you are can you please stand up by your feet That's okay. We well, thank God. Okay. okay, please. That's okay, please. Thank you. Our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumuyi, the general superintendent of Deeper Christian Life Ministry Worldwide, is delighted to have you fellowship with us. For those who are connected with us on satellite, the pastor is delighted to have you worship with us. We pray that this will not be your last time, but you continue to come here to receive more of the blessings of God that will be flowing through him. Our ushers will come to you and they will deliver 
a package to you. After that, you'll be please sit down. In this worship service, we have three main important services. We have special live Monday Bible study on Mondays by 6 p.m. Night of full liberation on Thursdays by 6 p.m. and then Sunday worship service. Special life Monday Bible study will be for group 2 at 6 p.m. here in Bagada. So you have to mobilize the people within your group and attend the Bible study here on Monday. That is group 2. Night of full liberation with our pastor. This is live. He will be here ministering live. On Thursday is for group 3. Next Sunday, the first Sunday of next month, group 2 will be attending the worship service. And the service will be broadcast live. And so we encourage you to invite other brethren and other people around here, neighbors, mobilize them and attend the worship service. So as you do that, the blessings of the Lord will come upon your very life in the name of Jesus Christ. And let us remember that those of us who are in these groups, you know your groups, so please inform the people in those groups so that they know what they are to do. Where we now have our Bible story. We have the choir them.
It's time for a Bible reading. A Bible reading is taken from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8. Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The first book of the king, commonly called the third book of the king. The first book of the king, commonly called the third book of the king. Chapter 8. Chapter 8. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark. And they brought up the ark of the Lord, and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told nor numbered for multitude. And the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his place, into the oracle of the house, to the most holy place, even unto the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves, that the ends of the staves were seen out in the holy place before the oracle, and they were not seen without, and there they are unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone which Moses put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness I have surely built thee an house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever. And the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and hath with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build an house that my name might be therein. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David my father to build an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David my father, Whereas it was in thine heart to build an house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house unto my name. And the Lord hath performed his word that he spake. And I am risen up in the room of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised, and have built an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart, who hast kept with thy servant David my father that thou promisedst him. Thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that thou promisedst him, saying, there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee how much less this house that I have builded. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today. 
that thine eyes may be opened toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel when they shall pray toward this place. And hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place. And when thou hearest, forgive. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head, and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk, and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands toward this house, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. That they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee, as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have builded is called by thy name. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause, if they sin against thee. For there is no man that sinneth not. And thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near, yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned, and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee. And give them compassion before them who carried them captive that they may have compassion on them for they be thy people and thine inheritance which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron that thine eyes may be open unto the supplication of thy servant and unto the supplication of thy people Israel to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto thee for thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance, as thou spakest by the hand of Moses thy servant, 
when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us, as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And let these my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the matter shall require that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings which he offered unto the Lord two and twenty thousand oxen and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep so the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. The same day did the king hallow the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar that was before the Lord was too little to receive the burnt offerings and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. And at that time Solomon held a feast, and all Israel with him, a great congregation, from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt, before the Lord our God, seven days and seven days, even fourteen days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went unto their tents, joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David his servant and for Israel his people. May God help us to be doers of the world. Amen.
under dark to the feet of man. God's building a church on the rise. We've been trampled on in the heat of the fight. The church has got eternal bride. It's almost time for the church to fly. God's building a church.
I said the church shall praise the Lord. What a day. What a service. And what a people, what a church. I pray that this day will be an unforgettable day in every life in Jesus' name. You are blessed. You'll keep on being blessed until the time you see the Lord face to face. His blessing will never diminish in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. What a glorious day. What a great opportunity for your people. And what a chance to come and express a joy, express a love, express gratitude unto you. We're asking, O oh Lord, you receive our praises in Jesus' name. Today, as we come to celebrate and come to worship and come to see you spiritually, we pray you'll touch every life. And we pray that the blessings of this day will overflow in every life in Jesus' name. Lay your hand visibly upon everyone. And do something unforgettable in every life. Yeah. Well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. We're coming to Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 6. Haggai 2, verse 6. For thus says the Lord of hosts yet once it's a little time a little while and i will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and i will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and i will fill this house with glory says the Lord of hosts the silver is mine and the gold is mine says the Lord of hosts the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former says the Lord of hosts and in this place in this place, in this place, will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. As you look at the book and the prophecy of Isaac of Haggai, you'll find it contains only two chapters. And yet, Haggai, as a prophet of God, was God's mouthpiece to declare God's mind and God's message along with God's mercy to God's people. If you have been studying the Bible, you might see that Agai is referred to as one of the minor prophets. Not minor because the message is minor, no. It's called the minor prophet or the other minor prophets because their books are not as long, as big as Isaiah, as Jeremiah, as Daniel, as Ezekiel. But you'll find as you come to all the minor prophets so-called and as you come to Haggai in particular, he has a major message with multiple promises from the almighty God and from the mighty prince of peace 
with great power and with great miracles for people that are misplaced, mistreated, and minimized. And his prophecy continues till the millennium, millennial period. Haggai then has a message containing encouragement for Israel and for the church. Haggai has a message with warning for Israel and for the church. Haggai calls us to righteousness. He calls us to commitment. He calls us to work, to work for the Lord. And he calls us to the promised blessing, present blessing, and the prophecy of end time events. As we look at the message today titled, The New Dawn of Greater Glory. Glory is coming in your life. Coming to your family. And coming to the church. And it's a greater glory. What you have never seen before, the Lord will do in your life, you will see. Mighty, mighty things from today will begin to roll over and over in your life. In Jesus' name. Greater glory coming in the church. It's a new dawn. And it's a new day. And it's a new dispensation. I pray every one of us without exception will be partakers of this. In Jesus' name. The message from Agai. The new dawn of greater glory. Three things we're going to quickly look at. Number one. The promise at the new dedication. The promise at the new dedication. Number two, our prayer in the new dispensation. It's a new dispensation. This day in your life, in your family, in the church at large, marks a new beginning. And it marks a new dispensation. Our prayer in the new dispensation. Number three, the power of renewed devotion. As our guy calls us to a new devotion, he reveals the power, he reveals the possibilities we have in Christ. And we have, as we look at what the Lord said he will do, and he said, the glory of this latter house will be greater than that of the former. It is beginning to happen. Point number one, the promise at the new dedication as you come to Haggai chapter 2 and you read from verse 4 the last line of verse 4 says for I am with you says the Lord of hosts that's the promise he has given us and he says from today anywhere you turn anywhere you go when challenges come in your life when difficulties confront you you must remember that the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator that has all the power in heaven and in earth, and with him nothing shall be impossible. It says in that verse 4, I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. Let's watch the Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection. That's what he assures us, everyone in the church, and the whole church, Matthew chapter 28, reading there from verse 18. It says in Matthew 28, verse 18, it says, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, there's no limitation here, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, church, tell me, I am with you. It's nearer to you than your problem. It's nearer than the sickness. It's nearer than the powers of the enemy. It assures us, I am with you always. 
even unto the edge of the world. And the people of God said, Haggai, Haggai chapter 1, reading from verse 13. Then speak Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. That tells us then, there's nothing for you to fear. He will solve all your problems. He will save every soul. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved in Jesus' name. As Haggai introduces us to the promises of God, and he begins with, I am with you. Number two, he says in Haggai chapter 2, verse 5. Haggai chapter 2, verse 5. According to the word that I covenanted, that I covenanted with you, when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. See that. The promise is given us from this day, you will never be alone. You will not be an orphan. The spirit of the living God, the Holy Ghost, will abide with you. He will quicken you every time. Energize you every time. Empower you every time. And whatever you lack in your life, that comforter, he comes to your life and he says, my spirit remains with you. That's assurance Christ has given us. In John chapter 14, reading from verse 16, John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter and that he may abide with you. How long? Forever. There are many people that will say, I don't know whether the spirit is there or not. I was saved such and such a time. Sanctified such and such a time. I remember the day I was filled, immersed, baptized in the Holy Ghost. I don't know whether he's there or not. He will abide with you forever. And every gift has given you the Holy Ghost. That will abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Somebody said, Amen. Amen. Come back to Agai chapter 2. It says, Now, number one, I will be with you, I'll never leave you alone. Number two, my spirit remains among you. Number three, I will fill this house with glory. Look at Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. In Haggai chapter 2, reading here from verse 7, here he tells us, I will shake the nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. What a promise. I will fill this house. Which house? This house, the house of God. But also, you there, you are the habitation of God. I am the habitation of God. I am the temple of God. He will fill your body with his glory. The light of his glory, the power in his glory will come to you. You will not be as a war before in Jesus' name. Malachi chapter 3. In Malachi chapter 3, telling us he'll fill this house with glory. It says in chapter 3 verse 1, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. He's coming to you today. As Savior, he'll get your side there. As healer, he'll get to you there. 
a sanctifier, it will get to you there. As a baptizer in the Holy Ghost, it will get to you there. You will be filled with his glory. You will carry his glory with you. You look at him, you look unto him, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, reading here in verse 18, but we all, how many of us? We all, how many are going to be blessed today? How many are going to carry the glory of God? We all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. That glory will never fade away in your life. Never fade away in your family. You will carry the glory of the Lord in Jesus' name. Number one, it's going to be with you forever. Number two, his spirit remains among us. Number three, I will fill this house with glory. Number four, the glory of this latter house shall be greater, shall be higher, shall be bigger, shall be more than the glory of the former. Look at Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 9. It says, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former. Whatever you've got before, greater things are coming. Whatever miracles you've seen before, greater things are coming. And whatever joy, whatever happiness you had before, greater is coming in your life in Jesus' name. Whatever provisions you have got from the Lord, greater, greater will come in your life in Jesus' name. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, says the Lord of hosts. And then number five of the promises, in this place, there's something waiting for you here. Every time you come here, just stepping in and sitting down there before you even begin to pray, there's something waiting for you. Every time you hear the word of God here, there's something waiting for you. That's why it says in the latter part, in the second part of verse 9, and in this place, thank God I have something in this place. I says, thank God I have something in this place. In this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. All your confusion will vanish away. All the conflict in your family will vanish away. You're at a crossroad, you don't know how to go. As you have come to this place today, according to the promise of the Lord, it will give you peace in Jesus' name. The peace that passes understanding. The peace that goes beyond your calculation. The Lord will grant unto you. You will not go out of this place and then as you are going, the devil will trouble your life. No, the Prince of Peace will reign in your life. Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. I thought the church would say, Amen. Amen. Come back to Haggai chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 19. Haggai chapter 2, reading from verse 19, and see what the Lord is telling you. It says in verse 19, Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine, and the fig tree, and the pomegranate, and the olive tree, has not brought forth from this day, I will bless thee. From this day, what's the date, date? Go and write that down. From today, you turn here, blessing will meet you. 
you turn to the other side, blessing will meet you. As you go to work tomorrow, blessing will meet you. As you be with your wife, your children at home, blessing upon blessing in your family in Jesus' name. From this day, from this day, wipe those tears away. From this day, take the unbelief away. From this day, I, says the Almighty God, I will bless you. I am blessed. Somebody there, I am blessed. Zechariah chapter 8. That's just the next book. Zechariah chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 11. It says, But now I will not be unto the residue of this people, as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts, for the siege shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. The ground shall give her increase. And the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these things. You will not be a loser. You will be a possessor. Verse 23, thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of all the nations. Evil shall take hold of the skirt, of the clothes, of the garment of him that's a Jew, that's a believer, saying, we will go with you. For we have heard that God is with you. They will hear. Your neighbors will hear. Your friends will hear. Your co-workers will hear. That a new thing, a new blessing is coming upon your life. It will show on your face. It will show in your language. You will know I'm a blessed man, I'm a blessed woman, I'm a blessed child of God. Look at the promise of God. I am with you, he'll never leave you. My spirit remaineth with you, the spirit will abide with you. I will fill this house with glory. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former. In this place, in this place, I will give you peace. From this day, I will bless thee. Look at Haggai chapter 2, verse 23. This number 7 now. It says in chapter 2, verse 23, Haggai, in that day, and this is your day, says the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Saltiel, says the Lord, I will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, says the Lord of hosts. That sentence there, I will make you as a signet. A signet, if you look at the first four letters, S-I-G-N sign. It's a signature right there. You see, in those olden days, uh, they need to use rubber stamp. They use copper, copper stamp. What I mean by that is, you know, sometimes you have a signature or whatever you write on the rubber stamp. And when you have written the letter to give a note of authority, you put that stamp there. In those days, what they had was a ring, the ring of the king. And the signature of the king or the image of the king, or the name of the king, is right there on the ring. And they called it a signet. And if they wrote anything, if they promised anything, if they gave a covenant, they'll put that stamp on it. That means anywhere that thing goes, that is authority, it cannot be changed. And in this Agai chapter 2 verse 23, after he had given a lot of promises, 
He now says, you, servant of God, you will become a signature. And then that signet, whatever you say, and you put that name of Jesus, and you say it's coming from you, Satan cannot alter that thing. The demons cannot change that thing. Let me show you an example of what, I'm, what the scripture means. Daniel chapter 6, verse 17. Daniel chapter 6, verse 17. The signet. And his stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the dead. And the king sealed it with his own signet. The king stamped it with his own signet. The king authorized it with his own signature and with the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. That's what it means when it says you are now a signet. I am the signature of God now. Somebody there, I am the signature of God. In, in Esther chapter 8. In Esther chapter 8, we're reading about that same thing. The seal or the signet. It says in Esther chapter 8 verse 8. Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you. You remember the story? They wanted to destroy all the Jews in Shushan. And then Esther went to the king and said, Help me. They want to destroy me and my people. And the king said, Who is that? They said, Haman. But there was a problem. Even though the king wanted to help, something had been written, something had been signed. And in the law of the medicine, the pashas, once something is written, they cannot change. How are we going to change this? Every negative prophecy against your life this morning will be changed in Jesus' name. Negative dream will be changed in Jesus' name. A curse, a yoke, everything is changed in Jesus' name. How will this be changed? That's why we come, the signet now. And the king told Esther and Mordecai, Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring that's a signet for the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring be no man reverse you are getting something here this morning that will never be reversed blessing that will never be reversed Provision that will never be reversed because of the signature. Because of the signature, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. Today is a day of special, irreversible blessing in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Point number two. A prayer in the new dispensation. Our prayer in the new dispensation. We need to understand about dispensation. A dispensation is a period of time. For example, with the building of Solomon's temple, it was a new dispensation to them. God promised them what he didn't promise even from the time of creation until that time, it was a new dispensation. Number two, with the uncommon ministry of the uncompromising prophets, it was a new dispensation for them. Number three, after the Babylonian captivity, they had gone to Babylon for 70 years, and now they came back after the Babylonian captivity, a new dispensation began for them. Actually, we call Haggai a post-exilic prophet. That means a prophet after the time of exile. 
And for them, it was a new dispensation. Not only that, number four, or the building of the post exilic temple, this temple that they were building with Nehemiah, with Ezra, and then Haggai coming in with Zechariah to prophesy, it was a new dispensation. And now at the first advent of Christ, when Christ came and Christ was born, another dispensation began. And what never happened in the Old Testament, the leper being cleansed, they were cleansed, the dead being raised with just a single word, and then the sick being healed, all the sick people being healed without exception. It was a new dispensation for them. Will you remember? Pentecost began another new dispensation. And the pouring out of the Spirit of the Lord, it was a new dispensation. Now, with the calling and the conversion of Paul the Apostle, a new dispensation began. Because before that time, all the Gentile world did not taste, did not have the great power outpouring of the power of God. But at the conversion of Paul, at the calling of Paul, a new dispensation began and everywhere the power of God was made known. And look at his own language about this dispensation we're talking about in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm reading here from verse 2. It says, if you have heard of the dispensation, you see that? If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, what has given me unto your word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote aforetime, afore, in few words, whereby when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And then in verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy prophets, holy apostles and prophets, by the Spirit, that the Gentiles shall be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So you will see, it was a new dispensation there. Now, the temple had been built. And it says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. What kind of prayer? We're coming to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter 6. I read from verse 19 and verse 20. A prayer in the new dispensation. As the Lord has brought us to this new dispensation. Look at our prayer. It says in verse 19, Second Chronicles, chapter 6. I respect therefore to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer on which thy servant prayed before thee, that thine ears, thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night. Any meeting we have here in the day like today, in the night like tomorrow, like Thursday or any other day, the eyes of the Lord will be open. As you come in, he will see you. He will see your need. He will meet with your need. Then he says, upon the place whereof thou hast said, thou wouldest put thy name there to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth towards this place. Thank God. You cannot say, I don't have faith. No, already there is the understanding. There is the covenant of the Lord. Anyone that comes in here and you open your mouth and you tell the Lord spiritually what your needs are, physically what your needs are, the Lord's ears will be opened unto your prayer. Look at verse 24. 
And if thy people, Israel, be put to the walls before thee, before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, I shall return and confess thy name and pray. You see that? And pray and make supplication before thee in this house. Then hear thou from heaven. Forgive their sin, the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again into the land where thou gavest to them and to their fathers. Somebody say amen. amen. In this place, while we pray, there will be forgiveness. There will be redemption. There will be mercy. And whatever blessings we have lost, as you come, as you pray, you will recover them in Jesus' name. Look at verse 26. When the heaven is shut up and there's no rain, because they have sinned against thee, yet if they pray towards this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them, it says if there's poverty, if there's unemployment, if there's joblessness, if there's a local famine, or if there is a wide, a statewide or national, nation, nationwide famine, and you come to this place, that famine will stop in your family. That unemployment will stop in your family. That scarcity and drought will stop in your family in Jesus' name. Verse 27, then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel when thou hast taught them the good way. Here the Lord will teach us the good way of the Lord in Jesus' name. Wherein they shall walk and send rain upon the land which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. Look at verse 29. Then what prayer or what supplication soever, whatsoever we ask in prayer. It says what prayer or whatsoever it may be we have supplication that shall be made of any man. Any man. Anybody there? Any man. Anybody there? Is going to answer your prayer. You cannot say he doesn't answer me. A new dispensation has come. I never see a miracle. A new dispensation has come. Any man, every man, thank God, there is answer to your prayer today. When everyone shall know his own sore, his own problem, and his own grief, and shall spread forth his signs in this house, then hear thou from heaven that dwelling place, and forgive, and render to every man according unto all his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men. Now verse 31, that they may fear thee, and walk in thy ways, so long as they live in the land, we thou gavest unto their fathers. He will give us grace not to backslide. You will not backslide. I'm talking to somebody there. I said you will not backslide. The Lord will keep you to the end in Jesus' name. Now we talk about our prayer. Our prayer in the new dispensation. Look at verse 32. Moreover, concerning the stranger, those who are not the members of the commonwealth of Israel, those who are not Jews, those are Gentiles, and they're coming in. And it says, moreover, concerning the stranger, which is not of thy people Israel, all our invitees, as they come in here, blessing upon blessing upon their lives in Jesus' name. Unbelievers will come here, they'll be blessed with salvation. They'll be blessed with healing. They'll be blessed with deliverance. They'll be blessed with prosperity. Even those who have never stepped in church and they're coming to this church for the first time in their lives, it says, moreover, concerning the stranger 
which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country. For thy great name say, and thy mercy and thy mighty hand, and I stretch out and if they come and what do they do? And pray in this house. Yep, your neighbors who are sick, let them come and pray here. Healing definitely will come to them. You have your neighbors who are tormented and oppressed, and you say they are not Christian, they are not believers, they are not members of the church. Bring them. The moment they step in here, miracle will happen to them in Jesus' name. If they come and pray in this house, verse 33, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for. Do according to all that the stranger, non-member, according to all that they call upon you for, to know that they, that the earth, all the people of the earth may know thy name and fear thee as, the, as does the people Israel and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. I thought I'd hear some amen there. Now verse 40, now my God, let I beseech you, thine eyes be open. Let thine ears att be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now therefore arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priest, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. And thy saints rejoice in goodness. You will rejoice today. Number one is the promise. Number two is her prayer. Number three now, the power of renewed devotion. The power of renewed devotion having come to this new temple new tabernacle new house of god having come here and the lord wants to begin a new thing with you a new thing with me a new thing with the old church he now wants us to have devotedness that were devoted to the lord and the power coming from heaven that will not come into our lives as a result of this new dedication of the temple as well as of the believer today. The power of renewed devotion. We're coming to Haggai chapter 2. And I read from verse 5, from verse 4, and from verse 5. Haggai chapter 2, verse 4. Look at this. Yet now... Be strong, mark that, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. And second time, be strong, O Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. And the third time, be strong, all ye people of the land, says the Lord. You see here in this verse 4, it says, the time of weakness is over. The time of trembling is over. And the time of saying, I cannot do this, I cannot do that, that time is over in your life. I can. I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and from this day, anywhere you are, you are here, you carry power back home. You are here, you carry power back to the field. You come here, you carry power to your working place. And let the weak say, Let the weak say, Let the weak say, I am strong. It tells Zerubbabel, the prince of the people. 
He tells Joshua, the priest of the people. And he tells the whole congregation, the whole people, the priest, the priest, the people, one by one. And he says, be strong. You are strong from now on. No weakness in your life anymore. Your heart is strong. Your mind is strong. Your life is strong. Now in Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14. Here we're reading from verse 11. Joshua chapter 14. And we're reading from verse 11. As yet... I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Have I lost my congregation? <laughs> Caleb said, I am. Not that I was. I used to be. I remember the good old days when Moses sent us out. I remember I had backbone. I had conviction. I had courage. And I went there and I came back and I said, let us go up at once for we are well able to overcome. And Caleb did not say, but you know, many years have come and gone. But you know, times have changed. But you know, much water has passed under the bridge. But you know, we're being confronted with this and that. No! Cut that away from your mouth. Language of pity, cut it off. Language of tiredness, cut it off. Language of weakness, cut it off. Language of I cannot, cut it off. Change your vocabulary. Now I can. I said, now I can. I said, now I can. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, somebody tell me, verse 12, Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. You will face new challenges with new power. With new courage. And whatever challenges before you, you'll be able to say, praise the Lord. I am even stronger today than I was many years ago. Give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou hadest in that day, how the Anakims were there, and the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me, the Lord will be with you. Then I shall be able. Then I shall be able. Somebody there? Then I shall be able. Then I shall be able. There is no mountain that confronts you, you will not be able to conquer. Somebody there, I'm able. My God is able. The Lord is able. And the greater one that abides in me is able. I'll be able to drive them out. And the, as the Lord has said. Come back, Haggai chapter 2. Number one, be strong. The power of the Lord now abides in you. You are strong in Jesus' name. Haggai chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Yet now, be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, O ye people of the land. For the Lord, says the Lord, and work. And work. And tell me, Walk. We're going to walk in Jesus' name. He has given us work to do. And we're not going to, you know, look back, think back, 
Can I? May I? You have the liberty. You'll work for the Lord. I said you'll work for the Lord. Actually, if you look at Mark chapter 14, chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Reading from verse 34. Mark chapter 13, verse 34. Mark 13, 34. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants, all his servants, and to every man his work. And to every man his work. Say that with me. And to every man his work. Say that again. Uh, there is no redundant uh, member in the church of the living God. He gave to every man. He has given it to you. I'm talking about you there. He has given it to you. I'm talking about you there. He has given it to you. And you will do the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. He has given to every man his work and the power to do it. And the power to overcome. And the power to succeed. That power comes to you right now. You will not fail. You will not falter. Give me a good church. Amen. Amen. Number one, be strong. Any strong person there today? And then number two, and work. Anybody going to work for the Lord there today? Thank God you all do it. Haggai chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 5. Haggai chapter 2. And here we're reading from verse 5. In Agai chapter 2, verse 5, According to the word that I covenanted with you, when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth with you. Tell me the last three words there. Tell me out aloud. I said, tell me the last three words. Fear ye not. You are now on top of every situation in your life. In the dark, fear ye not. In the day, fear ye not. Whatever dreams may come, fear ye not. Whatever the enemy say or do, fear ye not. Whatever past issues are trying to come up, fear ye not. Whatever medical reports you have, on, a, on an x-ray fear ye not you are not going to overcome that thing in Jesus name it says fear ye not the Lord will deliver you from every fear I say chapter 8 verse 12 I say chapter 8 verse 12 say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom these people shall say a confederacy neither fear ye their fear nor be afraid neither fear ye their fears nor be afraid people around you might be afraid you must talk confidently you must walk confidently you must live confidently why? How? How is it other people are fearing? And even if a confederacy, a community of fear, and it says for you, you must not fear. Verse 18. Behold, I and the children, are the children at home today? Behold, I and the children, are the children of God at home here today? I am the children whom God, whom the Lord has given me, are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts that dwelleth in Mount Zion. You will not fear. Isaiah chapter 35, I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 35. Here it is now in verse 4. Say to them, that of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. The Lord is speaking to you directly. You owe debts, you're afraid, how am I going to pay? This day, a divine supply will come. It says, be strong, fear not. 
Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Uh, any amen there? And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. The sage and highway shall be there. A way, it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those. The wayfaring men, no fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there. Nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there. But the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion with songs. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall, they shall take joy and gladness and sorrow and sign shall flee away from your life, from your family. Sorrow and sign shall flee away. Chapter 41 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading from verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee, angry against thee, shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive against thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a scene of noise. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, thou warm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, says the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, behold, I will make you a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. I read from verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Whatever comes, whatever happens, the Lord is assuring you, you will not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. And thou shalt remember, not, thou shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Verse 14, in righteousness thou shalt be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear and from terror it shall not come near thee. It shall not come near thee. It shall not come near thee. Verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. No matter who is behind that weapon, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment Thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Don't be tired. Give me a good amen. 
Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1. But now does this the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Somebody say, fear not. Look at the person beside you, eyeball to eyeball, and say, fear not. Look at the other side, eyeball to eyeball, and say, fear not. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Look at verse 18. Remember ye not the former things. A new day has come. A new dawn has come. Forget the past. For remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold. Behold. My brother, my sister there, behold, I will do a new thing. Now, now, today, now, somebody say today, now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? And even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That new day has started for you, for me, for us as the old church. Forget the past. Don't talk like the past. Don't cry like the past. Don't mourn like the past. A new day has come. For me. I said for me. I said for me. For you. For you. I said for you, rise up to a new day. Rise up to a new dawn. A new day has come. A new dawn has come. And the Lord has promised that he's going to begin that new thing right now. He's giving us prophecies. He's giving us promises. He's giving us power. He's giving us open door. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, oh Lord, here I am for the new thing. Here I am for the new day. The past is gone. All the sorrows of the past, gone. Sickness of the past, gone. Calamities of the past, gone. Oppression of the past, gone. Weakness of the past, gone. Everything of the past, gone. A new day has now come. A new day has now come. Rise up to that new day. Rejoice in that new day. Receive, in the, receive the blessing of that new day. A new day. A new dawn. This is a new dispensation. And we ought to have new, renewed devotion. And be strong. Let all the weaknesses vanish away. Strong in your heart. Strong in your mind. Strong in your will. Strong in your devotion. Strong in your commitment. Strong in your consecration. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Sicknesses are gone. Those diseases are gone. And then commit yourself to the work he has not given you to do. Be strong and work. Be strong and work. Be strong and work. And fear ye not. The Lord is with you, and fear ye not. His spirit abides with you, and fear ye not. His power and strength will support you, and fear ye not. He'll do a new thing. Fear ye not. He'll roll all the mountains away. Fear ye not. Face the future with courage, with strength, with devotion, with determination, with consecration, face the future, hand in hand with the Almighty God that cannot fail. A new day has begun. 
a new dawn is here. A new dispensation is starting in your life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Remember there is forgiveness here today. There is redemption here today. There is salvation here today. Christ died for every one of us on the cross of Calvary. And he says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means as you come to the Lord, no matter what you have done, no matter where you have been. And you say, Lord, forgive me. Already assures us that there's forgiveness today. Has bowed and eyes closed. Anywhere you are, in the auditorium here, anywhere you are, in any other church location, in the whole country, or outside the country, or you are in your own home and you are here in the world, and you want that redemption, you want that salvation, you want that forgiveness? You want that grace of God to flow into your life? Wherever you are, raise up your hands and we're going to pray and immediately God will forgive you and save you and write a new name, your name in heaven even today. Anywhere, anywhere, raise up that hand, raise up that hand and accept the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God, the grace of God right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray according to your promise that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray for all these people, forgive their sin. Cleanse their hearts. Change their lives. Grant them your salvation in Jesus' name. Let us be a witness with their hearts that all their sins are forgiven. That a new life has now come. Let them go, Lord. Go forth in the strength of this new faith. And live in newness of life in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you know that God has promised us that a new day is beginning. A new dawn is beginning. And the Lord wants to start you now with a load of blessings. Yeah. Carry go. Yeah. I said carry go. Yeah. You carry blessings home today in Jesus' name. Yeah. The ceiling available. Miracle available. Yeah. Deliverance available. Yeah. Answered prayer available. Yeah. Power available. Yeah. Utterance available. Prosperity available. Provision available. And the deep desires of your heart, day after the day, God will fulfill your desires. You will be strong. I said you will be strong. All those mountains before you will vanish away in Jesus' name. Jobs for the jobless. Power for the weak. Yeah. Anointing that breaks every yoke will come upon your life there. All the yokes are broken in Jesus' name. Yeah. Where are you? You must get something. Where are you? You must get something and carry the blessing of God back home today. Raise up that hand. Anointed hands and blessings coming upon your life untold in Jesus' name. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for everyone without exception. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Oh, Lord, I pray, everyone here, everyone everywhere, I pray that this will be a special day in every life in Jesus' name. Any sickness there, any infirmity there, any mountain of oppression there, I command you, Come out in Jesus' name. 
mountain of incurable disease be removed in Jesus name Lord I pray your mighty and healing hand will touch your people right now by your stripes we're healed by your stripe he's healed by your stripe she's healed touch them heal them in Jesus name make them stronger than their enemies all those paths of darkness occultic powers demonic power i break that sin right now in jesus name rise up and be free rise up and be free lord i pray for those who have like blindness like paralysis like kidney problem like somehow what they call incurable disease deformity infirmity i speak the word of miracle to everyone now receive the miracle in jesus name those blind eyes be opened in jesus name stroke paralysis rise up and walk in jesus name and all that they have said is incurable receive the touch of the lord right now be healed in jesus name job for the jobless provision for the poor employment for the unemployed let there be provision for everyone now in jesus name this one laboring struggling under heavy debt lord miraculously provide for them wipe their tears away the barren receive your miracle children right now in jesus name lord i pray you grant everyone power everyone power to my right to my left in front of me here at the galleries in all the various locations power in jesus name make the weak strong make the weak strong make the sad happy let your strength come to everyone and spiritually sanctified believers fill us with the holy ghost give us the tool to do your work and from now failure is gone fear is gone Strengthen your people, Lord. And today I pray something new will happen to everyone. And day after day, day after day, glory, 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 greater glory. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let there be confirmation in every life. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.